start started. All right. Notice is hereby given of the regular meeting of the Board of Education of the Town of Westfield in the County of Union, New Jersey at 7 p.m. on the evening of Tuesday, May 18th, 2021. The board meeting will be held via an online platform, which can be accessed at the board tab on the district's website. The meeting can also be accessed by phone at 1-415-655-0001, access code 120-923-8166. The purpose of the meeting is to, excuse me, to transact the regular business of the board and any other business to come properly before the board. This is to advise the general public and to instruct that it be recorded in the minutes that in compliance with chapter 231 of the public laws of 1975, entitled the Open Public Meetings Act, the Westfield School Board on Thursday, May 13th, 2021, caused to be posted at the office of the Board of Education located at 302 Elm Street, Westfield, New Jersey, and delivered to the Westfield leader the Star Ledger, the Westfield Library, Town Clerk of Westfield, Tap into Westfield and Patch.com, a meeting notice setting forth the time, date, and location of this meeting. Members of the public will be allowed to make public comments twice during the virtual meeting. In the beginning of the meeting, the public may comment on agenda items only, and at the end of the meeting, the public can comment on any topic. At the appropriate time on the agenda, the Q&A window will be open for public access. If you wish to address the board, please type in your name and address. Individuals who are calling into the meeting and wish to speak can touch star three to access the raise your hand function, which will notify a staff member that you want to speak. When your name is called, a staff member will unmute your microphone. Each speaker is limited to three minutes. Please note that if any member of the public becomes disruptive during the remote meeting, the board president may mute the speaker's microphone. Continued disruptions may result in removal from the virtual meeting. Dana, can we have a roll call, please? Sahar Aziz. Michael Bielan. Here. Brendan Galligan. Here. Rob Garrison. Here. Layla Morelli. Here. Gretchen Oleg. Here. Tara Porto. Sonal Patel. Uh, Dana, Here. Tara is on the attendee side. She didn't. Okay. She's not on the panelist side. Oh, okay. There right there she goes. Yep. Okay. Here. Oh. And Sonal and Amy Root. Here. Okay. And Sonal's here too. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, Layla, would you lead us in a flag salute, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you. Um, announcements, Mike, could you leave please? Sure, let me start get it here. Okay. Uh, on Tuesday, June 8th, it's New Jersey's primary election. Edison and Roosevelt intermediate schools and Wilson elementary schools are among Westfield's polling location. All students and staff at Edison, Roosevelt and Wilson will be on remote instruction on June 8th and return to in-person learning on June 9th. That's all. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, Rob, could you go next, please? Sure can. 11 Westfield High School students earned perfect scores of 36 on ACT subject areas in the 2020-2021 school year. Congratulations to all. September 2020, Emma Jepson, 12th grade in English, Carson Sharkey, 11th grade reading. In October 2020, Sean Hazard, 12th grade math. Carson Sharkey, 11th grade science, STEM English uh, reading. December 2020, Justin Anderson, 11th grade math, science, STEM. Uh, also, uh, uh, Kai Yang Shu, uh, 11th grade science, STEM English, 2021. Vivian Jekyll, 11th grade reading, uh, April 2021, April Beltran, 11th grade science and English, uh, Patrick Gallagher, 11th grade reading, Catherine Miles, 11th grade reading, Jacob Root, 11th grade in science, STEM, English reading, uh, Evan Tompkins, 11th grade, math and English. Congrats again. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, sorry, <laughs> finding my list. There we go. Um, Layla, could you go next, please? Sure. 
The Westfield Green Team, working in collaboration with Westfield High School teachers, is hosting a virtual green collar career fair. An introduction panel will be held on May 20th from 7 to 8 p.m. with panelist discussions on May 24th, 25th, and 27th from 1 to 2 p.m. Westfield High School environmental science teacher Jeffrey Robbins will moderate the event. Students and parents are invited to attend. Each panel will feature experts from a variety of green collar industries, including renewable energy, marine biology, conservation, farming, waste management, professional engineering, and more. More information, including a list of the panelists and the sign up link, can be found on the community flyers page under the environment section at www.westfieldnjk12.org. Sorry, www westfieldnjk12.org. Contact Lois Krauss, Green Team Co-Chair at greenteam at westfieldnj.gov with any questions. All right. Hey, thank you. Um, let's see. Um, Gretchen, I believe you might be able to, you had one and I'm asking you to pick up a second one. Is that okay? Yeah, I actually had two and I'm okay. happy to, to read to Haz if you, if you want. Okay. Um, so my first one is about the Westfield High School softball program, which uh, raised more than $10,000 for lace up for pediatric cancer with players donning gold shoelaces as part of a fundraising initiative by the New Jersey based nonprofit organization. Go for the goal. Go for the goal posted the following message on social media. A, mil a million thanks to coach Caitlin Cheddar and the Westfield softball team. It's a so super tough year. They have been a beacon of hope for better days ahead. Our number one fundraiser with over 10,000 raised to help New Jersey kids with cancer. Way to go, Blue Devils. My next announcement, 14 students in grades six through eight competed in an online math competition in April with one of the Westfield teams placing fifth out of 35 teams. During the Middlesex County Academy math competition held virtually this year, the students competed both individually and in teams. They answered challenging questions using higher level abstract thinking and computation without a calculator. Edison's seventh grade math teacher, Jackie Manzo, says the students exhibited excellent mathematical skills and teamwork. We want to congratulate the fifth place, fifth place finishers, Elias Chang, Alex Fu, Alex Hu, Justin Lee and Evie Shen and to all the competitors. And then lastly, um, I just want to hear it. Sorry. So uh, third announcement is a congratulations to Westfield High School 11th grader VJ Shri Nafson, who has been accepted into the New Jersey Governor's School of Engineering and Technology to be hosted by the Rutgers University School of Engineering from June 27th through July 23rd. According to program organizers, this summer scholars will take four academic online classes and complete a virtual research and or design project with four to five other students. VJ says he's excited to attend the governor's school this summer and he's looking forward to working with students who share his interests and with professors in areas such as robotics and programming. He's, he also says he's extremely grateful to his teachers at Westfield High School for their support. So I'm Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for doing the extra too. Um, let's see. I think Tara's joining us remotely. So Brendan, you're going to read Tara's and one of your own, correct? Correct. Okay. Congratulations to the Westfield High School boys golf team. Okay. Coach Ryan Daly and assistant coach Enrico Basso for their championship win in the New Jersey sections one and two group four sectional tournament. We wish them luck tomorrow in, we wish them luck in tomorrow's group four state championship and the tournament of champions. And lastly, Westfield Public Schools and offices will be closed on Friday, May 28th for the unused snow day and on Monday, May 31st to observe Memorial Day. That's it. Great. Thank you. And I'm sorry, I took you out of order. That's usually our second to last announcement. And I'm, I forgot that Sonal has two to read as well. Sorry, That's Sonal. <laughs> That's okay. I think people uh, are always happy to hear about a day or two off. So probably <laughs> which, whichever order we put it in, it'll probably stick. Sorry, go ahead, Sonal. No problem. On May 25th, from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m., the Westfield High School No Place for Hate Committee will host a community book discussion on chapters one and two of Tell Me Who You Are by Winona 
Gu and Priya Volchi. More information, including how to RSVP, can be found under recent news on the high school website. And my second announcement is a Westfield Community Food Drive will be held this Saturday, May 22nd from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Drop-off locations are the parking lots of Roosevelt Intermediate School and Westfield High School. For contact less donations, drive up to the Westfield Police Department trailer, pop your trunk, and an officer will retrieve your donation. Items in most need are canned meals, beans and vegetables, spaghetti sauce, boxed macaroni and cheese, rice, pasta, cereal, cleaning supplies, and paper products. Monetary donations also are accepted by going to www.westfieldunitedfund.org slash what underscore you underscore can underscore do slash donate dot html. Be sure to list food pantry in the in honor of box. Great. Thank you very much. The reading of websites is always challenging, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Uh, and I have 1 announcement, which is that the next board of education virtual meeting will be held on Tuesday, June 1st, beginning at 7 PM. We look forward to honoring the 4 recipients of the 2021 Westfield high school teacher and staff awards and 4 optimist award winners at the intermediate school level for both 2020 and 2021. Uh, the agenda will be posted on Thursday, May 27th under the board tab on the district website at www.westfieldnjk12.org. Instructions for how to access our virtual board meetings also can be found under the board tab on the district website. All right, um, so moving right along, uh, now is the first opportunity uh, for public comment. We'd like to recognize the public uh, for comment on agenda items only. So if there's anything you'd like to say about any of our agenda items, if you could type your name and address into the Q&A box on your screen, or if you're calling in, the star three function on your phone performs the same, uh, the same function. Um, and we will recognize anyone who has comments at this point. There will also be another point later in the meeting for comments as well, if you'd prefer to wait. Brian, are you seeing anyone? No, I don't see anyone yet. Okay. Um, give it a few more seconds and see if anyone types in their name and address. Still no one, Brian? Nope, no one. Okay, hold your comments for later then. There will be another opportunity. We'll go ahead and close the Q&A box for now and move over to Dr. Dolan for the superintendent's update or report. Thanks. Thanks very much. So as of today, we have just under 5,000 students in our schools for daily in-person instruction. And we are all very happy to have them there. Seeing their smiling faces and hearing their voices brings a renewed energy to our schools. Principals and staff are working with their PTOs to plan end of the year activities, including high school graduation and moving up ceremonies. As announced by Governor Murphy, New Jersey schools will return to full in-person classes for the next school year. We continue to prepare for a full day return to school in September. There are many steps we have taken already to be fully operational in the fall. As we know, last month, the board approved the 2021-22 budget, which supports the many aspects of running a school district. Also, as you can see on this agenda and others from the past several weeks, we continue to appoint well-qualified administrators, teachers, and staff, so that schools will be fully staffed in September. We have upgraded existing ventilation, air conditioning, and heating systems. Additional HVAC improvements are scheduled for the summer. As indicated on agendas, transportation routes for the new school year have been renewed and approved, reviewed and approved. The vendor contracts have received board approval, including Chartwells, which oversees lunches provided in the high school and middle school cafeterias and other district food services. The news regarding COVID vaccination is encouraging, with vaccines now approved for children ages 12 and up. The mayor recently reported that as of May 13th, 83% of the adult population in Westfield has been vaccinated with at least one dose, and 68% of the adult population is fully vaccinated. We are optimistic that we will see similar percentages in our students age 12 and up by the start of the new school year. 
there is much to feel positive about as we look to the future. The state has indicated we will receive additional guidance for September by the end of this month. The CDC has also indicated that guidance for next year will be forthcoming. I realize it is difficult for all of us to keep up with all the changes. We will continue to provide updates as we plan for the fall. Please check the COVID-19 hub on the district and school websites for information and links to the latest local, state, and federal resources. But again, I'll end as I started. It is great to have so many students back in our schools and, um, and, and we're making progress in that regard and glad to have everybody back. All right. Um, okay. Any comments or questions from board members at this point? No? Okay. Um, moving along, um, I would like the board to approve the minutes of the board meeting held on May 4th, 2021, and the private minutes of May 4th, 2021. Could I have a second? Sonal, I think I saw your hand first. Thank you. Um, all in favor, or do we do a voice vote? I'm sorry, Dana, I should know this by now. <laughs> all in favor. All in favor. Aye. 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 Any abstentions or no's? The only person I can't tell was Tara. I don't know what. Uh, it, the private minutes. Um, were, was I was I conflicted? Would me and Sonal were Sonal and I conflicted? You can uh, just abstain from the private session if you weren't there. Okay, we're. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know if that was the meeting we talked about I, that or not. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you can I, abstain. So we have. I'm unmuted. Thank you, Brian. It's Tara. Yes. Okay, okay. and we have uh, what three abstentions then? Yeah, we were, yeah, um, Layla and I were not in the private May 4th. Probably okay. Gretchen, Gretchen wasn't either. Yeah. No, I was there. You guys were there too. I remember the conversation. Okay. <laughs> so that wasn't the one that we're abstaining from then. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we abstained from a different remember one. remember what we talked about. So I think we had a yeah. lot of meetings. Yeah. I think mm. that was the April meeting that we did. Okay. <laughs> I think so. Okay. Okay. Got it. Uh, okay, <laughs> you're square Dana. You're good. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right, then, um, moving along to personnel, uh, I'd like the board to consider personnel items, uh, 1 through 30 now, uh, with the amendment. Okay. Thank you. Rob, um, Dr. Dolan, I believe you have, uh, 1 that you'd like to call out in particular. I do. You're absolutely right. Great. This evening, I'm pleased to recommend Dr. Tiffany Jacobson as the principal of Lincoln Early Childhood Learning Center, effective July 1, 2021. Tiffany joined the Westfield staff in 2017 as the district's K-12 supervisor of English language arts, supervising approximately 180 teachers and carrying responsibilities for the writing and revision of curriculum, facilitating professional development centered on research-based practices and literacy, and during, this year, and during this year, Tiffany has served as Lincoln's interim principal, where she has been in charge of the daily operations of the building, prioritizing the health, safety, and well-being of both students and staff. She has handled her responsibilities with grace, steadfastness, and professionalism, which has been no easy feat during the pandemic. Dr. Jacobson stood out among the field of 48 candidates and was at the forefront of the candidates' interviews by the interview team. The interview team consisted of representative teachers, parent, board member, principal, and supervisor, and the head of HR, Barbara Ball, and myself enjoyed working with all the members of the committee and thanked them for their service. I'm confident that Tiffany will continue to excel and that she and the Lincoln staff will be ready for the student's arrival in September. All right. Um, okay. And so let me get this right. now. Now we vote first. Hold on, uh, Amy, oh. if I can. Yes, please. Uh, I'd like it. to call. I'd like to call special attention to uh, personnel item number six. Okay. Uh, with Dr. Dolan retiring uh, effective June thirtieth, and Dr. Gonzalez starting with us on August first, that left a, a, a short gap in our superintendent position. Uh, Dana Sullivan will be stepping up into that role as uh, our interim superintendent and the BA doing both roles <laughs> for the month of July. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I just want to acknowledge her for that. Uh, let the public know that there is no gap in the, the leadership of the district and uh, thank Dana for stepping up when we when we need the help. 
Thank you very much. Thank you for, for calling that out. Um, we truly appreciate it, Dana. We will try to do whatever we can to make it as smooth of a July as possible. Um, but we are grateful that uh, there was not a need to bring in someone from outside the district for such a short time um, and really appreciate that you'll be able to kind of help uh, move things along. Um, and it is worthy of calling out because we've had members of the public who've been curious, um, you know, how will, how will we make this work? And, and this is how, so, um, so we are grateful and we appreciate it. And thank you, Brendan. And, and we as a board have more. known that for a little bit while longer than the public has obviously, uh, right. but until the county approved the, the interim position, uh, we couldn't announce it, so. Right. I was just going to add one more comment. Ever the dutiful BA, she's saving the district significant <laughs> money by taking the step. <laughs> so thank you, Dana. Yes. Much, much appreciated. Yes. <laughs> All right. And now a vote. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mike Beelan. Yes. Brendan Galligan. Yes. Rob Garrison. Yes. Layla Morelli. Yes. Gretchen Oleg. Yes, although I should abstain from uh, agenda item six, it's not a reflection of my full faith and confidence in your ability. <laughs> <day. laughs> Tara Porto. Yes. Sonal Patel. I didn't hear you, Sonal. I think you froze. Yes. <laughs> okay. And Amy Root. Yes. Uh, thank you. And welcome um, to Tiffany Jacobson, continuing in your new ish position. Um, round of applause. Yes, what a, what a year to step in as an interim. So um, if you'd like to say a few words, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Dolan, Ms. Root, and esteemed members of the community. It has been my privilege to serve the Lincoln community on an interim basis this school year. Anyone who has visited Lincoln immediately recognizes it is a special place filled with little furniture, inquisitive faces, and an amazingly loving and talented staff. This year has pushed all of us to reimagine and innovate the most basic practices. In Westfield and particularly at Lincoln, families and staff have confronted these challenges in stride. Our collective efforts have kept our students safe and have allowed us to address their functional, academic, and social emotional needs. And regardless of the program, our little Lincoln Lions are happy and have made progress. I'm deeply grateful for the opportunity to continue to serve the Lincoln community in this important role. And as we push past this extraordinary time, it is my intent to build on our innovation and resourcefulness and lead the Lincoln early childhood center with humility, excitement, and a sincere love for our littlest learners. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tiffany. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much and, and best of luck. I was going to say, I hope next year runs a little more traditionally for you. Um, I did look back and saw that last year, Peggy Oster said in January of 2020 that she hoped it would be an uneventful year. So uh, I'm not saying that, but uh, uh, congratulations on your new official role and um, we're, we're fortunate to have you. So thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight too. Thank you. All right, um, let's see, moving along to facilities. Mike. Uh, we don't have this report this evening, but uh, we are scheduled to meet this coming Friday, uh, which is the 21st. So we'll have a report for the next meeting. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Gretchen, long range planning. No report this evening. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, policies. Brendan. Yep. Uh, I asked the board to approve policy item number 1. No, 2nd. Thank you, Sonal. And Rob, please correct me if I'm doing this wrong. Uh, there was a slight error with the version of the policy that was attached to the agenda. I emailed the corrected version out to everybody. So I'd like the, the board to approve the corrected version of 3233 uh, as I sent it out to everybody. Uh, thank you, Rob. Okay. Uh, so this is to approve for first reading. Uh, 
three, two, one, four, conflict of interest. Three, two, three, three, political activities. Uh, three, five, uh, th I'm sorry, five, three, three, zero dot zero five seizure action plan. Uh, Seizure action plan is uh, just came up during our normal review cycle of uh, no, sorry. This is a new policy uh, as required by the state. Uh, the other 2 came up uh, in a review of. Political activities uh, out of the discussion at the board table about a month ago. Uh, we tried to create a. Uh, as neutral of a framework as possible to allow teachers. Uh, some gu some guardrails uh, for what's permissible and and not permissible in the classroom, so that things aren't left up to left up in the air. Uh, we want to encourage robust discussions, uh, but with without creating uh, outsized political slant in the classroom. Uh, if any of the other committee members want to chime in on that discussion, because it was it was a great discussion. Uh, I I can chime yeah. in. Yeah. Um, I thought it was a great discussion. Also, it talked about um, uh, discussing controversial issues from a very um, objective standpoint, pointing out the different arguments, the different sides, the different beliefs, the different feelings, and encouraging students to formulate their own opinions and their own questions and their own concerns without providing influence on those students um, just guiding through the through the, through the issues in an educational informational um, way. That was a great discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be two more policies coming up uh, once they're vetted by our staff to make sure that uh, it's a workable solution. Uh, one thing I do want to call out is uh, the high eye and well, really all of our school newspapers have been historically. Uh, it's a hands off approach from an from an administration's standpoint. Uh, and we want to maintain that independent journalistic environment. So they're specifically exempt from most of the provisions of these policies so that they're able to interview candidates and do things that, that may require additional approvals for a, for a different class. Uh, we really value the, the independent press aspect and want to want to preserve that as much as possible. So actually, I think we've gone above and beyond uh, as much as possible and made it explicit. Yeah. Any, other, I could see any questions from the board? Or sorry, Amy. No, no. I was just going to say I could see that in the in the, in the version of the policy. Um, you know that it specifically addresses the the journalistic uh, approach um, and uh, and preserving student voice um, in the writing process too. So mm -hmm. I I just think it's a it's it's a good it's a good point to make. So, thank you. Thank you. The other thing I'll add too, even though I wasn't, um, I'm not part of the policy committee. I did uh, have conversations with Brendan and others in reference to this. The one, the way I, I commend Brendan for for crafting this because it's not something that's just purely um, uh, something that just uh, copied from other resources. It's it really is something where uh, piece together a few things um, that that makes this policy uh, I think pretty pretty unique, but also in reference to curriculum, this is really geared towards uh, teachers as individuals and others individuals versus not being able to, it doesn't suppress or, or, or necessarily impact the curriculum that we have, which is really important to distinguish too. This is really the actions of individual teachers versus being able to uh, teach courses that are currently offered. Uh, again, I just think that's important to distinguish the two. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, if there's no other questions from board members, Dana. Mike Phelan. Yes. Brendan Galligan. Yes. Rob Garrison. Yes. Layla Morelli. Yes. Gretchen Oleg. Yes. Tara Porto. Yes. Sonal Patel. Yes. Amy Root. Yes. All right. Uh, th Thank you, everybody. Uh, we do not yet have a, another policies meeting scheduled, but we will have one before the end of the year. Great, thank you. Um, moving on to uh, curriculum instruction and programs. Um, I'd like the board to consider curriculum item number one. Could I get a second, please? Thanks, Layla. Um, asking the board to approve for first reading 
um, just two curricula this time. Um, uh, and they're both visual and performing arts music classes, seventh, sixth and seventh grade vocal music and eighth grade vocal music. Um, our sixth um, meeting in was uh, May 6th and we had a good discussion with Tom Weber. We talked about about the vocal music program in the in the intermediate schools specifically, but then also more broadly talked about um, just how technology has influenced what students and teachers have been able to do in those classes. Because um, talk about an area where you really needed to reinvent things um, early and often. Uh, these vocal music classes were certainly uh, certainly there. Um, and uh, they're fortunate they've been able to um, to come up with some risk mitigation strategies for being able to sing indoors together again safely. Um, that was a project that went on for uh, a number of months, um, but fortunately too, the weather is nice and they can, uh, they can get together and sing outside when the weather is good. Um, we talked about, about the musical productions as well and uh, changes to um, changes to how those were uh, arranged and, and conducted. Um, so it was a, it was a really good, good conversation. So, um, and just on that note, Amy, if I could add, yes. um, uh, I had my oldest daughter was in Godsville and my son was um, at the high school and my son was in Annie at Edison. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this a little bit at the curriculum meeting, but it was really wonderful that they got to be a part of something transitioning into their new years in a new school. And they did such, they really did such an amazing job. And you had all of the student um, tech support and things that they wouldn't have done necessarily had it been in person and there was there was still bonding and still that experience and we still got to see this show and I just I wanted to say that the the staff and the students did amazing jobs and you know we you know we made it like a movie party and it was just it was it was really it was wonderful so they did a good job you know in spite of all the restrictions that's great that's really good to hear we did talk about that that sometimes you know we as a community, even we board members don't always know everything that's going on um, and the ability to talk about to talk it up really um, to the to the community at large is is great. So thank you for thank you for that perspective, Layla. That's good. Okay. Um, there's no other comments or questions. We'll do a roll call, Dana. Mike Thielen. Yes. Brendan Galligan. Yes. Rob Garrison. Yes. Layla Morelli. Yes. Gretchen Oleg. Yes. Ara Porto. Yes. Sona Patel. Yes. Amy Root. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's see. Moving on. Uh, finance. Rob. Yes, we did not have a finance committee uh, meeting in the last week, but we do have one uh, tomorrow morning scheduled. Uh, so I do, but I do have uh, items 1 through 25 uh, that I need a 2nd for. Michael, uh, and there are two that I do want to uh, give a shout out and pay special attention to. Uh, item number four, we are accepting a grant of $50,000 from the Westfield Foundation, hopefully I'm saying this right, uh, Bogart Fund, mm -hmm. uh, to be used to train teachers in responsive classroom. Uh, and also item number 24, uh, let me just get to that, which is to accept a donation from the Westfield Coalition for the Arts in the amount of $7,486.83. The funds will be used to pay for a PA system for the Westfield High School marching band worth $5,047.94 and $2,438.89 will fund half of the cost of a Model 51 bassoon. So with that, Dana, uh, oh, if there's no comments, uh, Good. Can, I, can I just add one thing um, about the responsive classroom grant? Um, that's really great. We'd actually talked about it a bit in um, in curriculum and in a previous month we were fingers were crossed about about getting the grant. So it's a relief that um, it's nice to hear that it's been received. And um, uh, Paul Panero had explained that um, it sounds almost like it's a structural thing, but it's really it's really more about professional development for the teachers um, as as an approach for um, interacting with students and uh, very student centered um, and it will be we feel really, really helpful this fall getting um, getting people back in um, to the classrooms on a full time basis. So the, the, the grant is primarily, I think, for professional development um, for the teachers and um, and we look forward to hearing more about that um, 
as the summer and the, and the fall begins. So just wanted to add that perspective. Thanks. Thank you, Amy. I appreciate you doing that. Sure. Dana, roll call. Mike Beelan. Yes. Brendan Galligan. Yes. Rob Garrison. Yes. Layla Morelli. Yes. Gretchen Oleg. Yes, although I have to abstain on, I think it was number four, the grant from the Westfield Foundation. I'm a trustee of the Westfield Foundation. I abstain there. I feel like it's probably best I do the same here. Thank you. Okay. Tara Porto. Yes. Sonal Patel. Yes. Amy Root. Yes. All right. And as you said, finance tomorrow morning, right, Rob? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Thanks. Okay. Uh, technology, Gretchen, any report? Uh, no report except that we have a meeting on July 11th at 9 a.m. July 11th? No, June 11th. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> okay. Sorry. It just might be news to some of your members. Just wanted to make sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, then. Uh, I'd like the board to consider the notes for the record. Um, let's see. Uh, do we have any unfinished business we'd like to address? Um, okay, I wasn't sure if if it might be worth mentioning. There were uh, there were a question or two from our last meeting that we we've received some letters about in the interim, and it might be useful for the public to to know the answer to to at least one of the questions. Uh, a couple of people had asked. Um, now that the elementary schools are going back to a full day, why is it ending at 2.30 and not at 3.05? A couple people had asked that question, and we'd seen it um, in letter form this week as well. Um, I believe it's addressed in the new FAQs, the latest update on the, um, on the, on the website as well. But just to make sure people understand, um, because of how many times we have changed the schedule around for students at that grade level, um, uh, it turns out one of the things that would need to change in a way that we felt wasn't good was that um, with just a, uh, less than two months left of school, some of our most vulnerable learners in our special education programs might have to change uh, teachers um, were we to extend the day fully until 3.05. And by keeping the day ending at 2.30, um, which still adds an extra two hours, which still adds lunchtime um, at the elementary schools, um, we were able to pre preserve the schedules for uh, for for many of for so many of those students, and that's that's why that decision was made um, to curtail the elementary school day at two thirty. So I know it was a little bit of a puzzle for some people. So in case they didn't get a chance to read the FAQs, I just wanted to take this opportunity to make sure that got that got stated. Um, so um, and I guess that was really all I wanted to say at this point. So. Uh, is there any new business that anyone wanted to bring up? Okay. How about liaison reports? Yeah, Rob, go ahead. Uh, although the, the rec uh, commission uh, did not meet, I did want to recognize uh, Don uh, Bogardis. He is receiving an award tomorrow night at the New Jersey Park and Recreation Association uh, Awards Night where he's being recognized and receiving the Michael B. Berman Award for Professional Excellence, which is one of the highest awards you can achieve in that professional association. So I wanted to uh, congratulate Don on that honor okay. and what received recognition for his hard work. Yes, always nice. Thank you. All right. Yep, Brendan. All right, I got a couple of liaison reports. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Last week sat in on the executive committee of the NJSIAA. Uh, they are, have been working diligently to recraft the schedules for high school sports uh, across all seasons uh, to try and synchronize the start times and end times of every sport except for football. Uh, they're, they're, not, they're not messing with football. Um, so that there's a little bit of a break between seasons and no overlap. Right now, if uh, uh, say a winter track player goes all the way to the meet of champions, but they also want to play baseball in the spring. They have to get a waiver from the state to be able to play 2 sports at the same time. Uh, most sports don't allow you to skip those early practices. So th th there was a lot of uh, coordination that was required. Mm -hmm. uh, this gets rid of the waiver uh, for all but the most extreme cases. Uh, football is still a separate case. Uh, the football season will still extend past Thanksgiving and 
So that will require some some waiver in the overlap between football and winter sports. Uh, additionally, they're changing the or they're waiving the transfer rules for next year. So mm -hmm. players that have been at a private school that are going to a public school or vice versa. Uh, there was a, a blackout period where they couldn't participate. Now they can start as long as they transfer by the first game of that season, mm -hmm. uh, they'll be able to play the full full season. Uh, moving on to the, I'll go, go with the Cannabis Commission. Uh, <laughs> last week, uh, the Cannabis Commission held its first public meeting, uh, mm -hmm. took public comment for about two and a half hours. Uh, some very strong opinions in this community about whether or not Westfield should allow dispensaries, where they should be operated, uh, or whether there, sh there can be wholesaling operations somewhere in town. Current zoning doesn't allow for any of it, to be honest, but there are that's what the commission's meeting to decide. Mm -hmm. uh, give a recommendation to the council uh, by June fifteenth is their goal. Okay. Uh, keep going. Uh, <laughs> NJSBA uh, they had the delegate assembly on on Saturday. Uh, new mm -hmm. officers were elected and installed. Uh, one piece of legislation through that group is to to create a mandatory training program for parent advocates in special education cases. Mm -hmm. right now it. Most parents, at least in Westfield, are represented by attorneys, but that's not the case in most of the state. So you've had a practice of parent advocates who are, who might be a parent that went through the system or somebody that is just familiar with it in whatever capacity, uh, but had, had no credentials. And in some cases there was fee for service and people were getting ripped off by, by advocates that had absolutely no experience and they weren't acting in the best interest of, their, of the kid that they were discussing. Uh, school board recommends you know, everybody deserves some kind of representation in those hearings, and it's better if that person that person is either an attorney or has some formal training. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just one piece of update from the school law commission: <laughs> uh, there was a school law case handed down last week, or sorry, at the end of last month, uh, to censure, and then uh, ultimately, uh, there's in process to remove a board member for writing something critical of the board's operations itself hmm. on social media, but put the disclaimer of this is just my personal opinion. That's no longer a valid option for board members when discussing board business on social media. Uh, it, your, your personal opinion, yes, that's, it is your personal opinion, but you're writing, you can't say I'm not writing as a board member. So just be very careful about what you do because uh, this person hmm. was, Working to try and change the dynamics of the board through through the through the election wrote a, uh, a letter or a public an open letter critical of current board members that were on the ballot and endorsed current new people to create a super majority and it, it was a nasty fight, but the end result is we, you can't say this is just my personal opinion or I'm acting as a private citizen. And wow. that's it. Okay, all right. Okay. Uh, I continue to be amazed at the variety of um, experiences that boards have uh, throughout the state of New Jersey mm -hmm. um, and feel very fortunate that um, that I have you all here uh, on our board. Um, so thank you. Um, was that I think that was 4 different <laughs> 4 or 5 somewhere in there. 4 or 5. Yes. Yes. Uh, wow. We're lucky to have you. It's been a busy month. Busy couple mm -hmm. of weeks. Yes. All right. Um, I will just give a short report. I um, sat in on the high school PTSO meeting um, and uh, was very pleased to be able to share with them um, that uh, that with um, funds from um, from I'm losing track. I think it was SR2 money that they're um, we're able to uh, begin looking for a student assistance counselor at the high school. Um, that's been something that the counseling department has been advocating for quite a while. Um, in these times of um, challenging budgets, it's been difficult to uh, to um, to be able to make that a reality. But the funds will allow for us to uh, hire someone for at least the next year to assist during what will certainly be a challenging year, um, as well as other other positions and programs that will be um, putting in effect with that with that. Um, I don't think you know if we can call it a grant. <clears throat> Excuse me, um, but. Um, but we're fortunate that we've received funds that will allow us to make uh, fall a little smoother. We hope for 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 a lot of our students. Um, 
high school PTSO is uh, also having new uh, officers for next year and uh, focusing quite a bit on end of year activities. Um, as many of the school PTOs are, I'm sure, um, and it, I can't even begin to keep up with all of the latest uh, edicts from uh, the governor about what's allowed in terms of outdoor gatherings and group size and whether that applies for indoors and dance floors and tents. And um, But fortunately, uh, the, the high school administration is on it and uh, it sounds like they're on their way to um, a prom for seniors. And um, and hopefully a graduation ceremony that is a little more like what we're used to than last year's was. So that's always good as well. Um, any other liaison reports? No. Um, okay. If not, then we'll um, go ahead and um, open up the uh, the Q and A window for comments. Uh, again, um, comments from the public. Um, on any item, um, agenda items, or or anything else that you'd like to comment on, um, and if we can, we'll address them at the end. But we won't um, won't answer questions in the middle, back and forth. We'll just uh, save it up till the end to allow the public uh, an opportunity to speak. And it looks like Christine Binder raised her hand. Christine, if you could type your name and address in the uh, Q&A box, and then I can unmute you. Christine, you're unmuted you if you want to if you want to state your name and address. Sure. I'm sorry. Uh, my name. Christine, are you still there? Did we lose her? Lose the connection? I don't know. Uh, Christine, if you'll, uh, again, type your name uh, and address into the Q&A box. I'll call on you. I'm going to go on. Uh, Emily uh, Barker. Uh, Emily, it says that you're on the phone, but I do not know which call-in user. So, uh, Emily, I'm going to unmute the... Uh, Emily, you're unmuted. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, Could you state your name and address, please? Emily Barker, 434 Longfellow Avenue. I just have a question about next year. As I've been told or I heard that um, the plan is to go back full time next year, no remote learning next year. Um, what does that mean? What does full time mean? Does full time mean nine to three, which is what normally is it normally is, or is it something else? I would just like to know what that means. Thank you. Okay, Christine, let me call uh, on you, mute you again. Go ahead, uh, Christine. Please state your name and address. Christine, if you'd like to go ahead and type your question, I'll ask your question on your behalf, unless you want to make a statement. If you have a statement, then uh, it seems you're having some technical difficulties on your end with your microphone.
Uh, Amy, I don't see anyone else at this point. Okay, and we've gotten um, nothing else from Christine, right? No, unfortunately, I've not heard any, not heard her. Or oh, oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Okay. I'll read her question on her behalf. I'm curious as to why students need to wear masks while outside during gym when Governor Murphy's uh, Executive Order 175 states that face coverings aren't to be worn during physical activity in a ventilated area or in extreme heat. Okay, I uh, have a raised hand here from one of the one of our call in uh, individuals. Unfortunately, I do not have a name, so I'm going to unmute the uh, call in user that raised their hand. Uh, I'll unmute you now. Please state your name and address, and you have three minutes. Go right ahead. Brian, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. You're all set. Good. Yeah. Hi. This is uh, Gerald Gleason, 418 Alden Avenue. Uh, apologies for not actually being on the Zoom. I'm on my uh, phone this evening. I guess my uh, my statement and my question actually really go to what someone had mentioned before is really related to when the district will disclose in detail what is the reopening plan for the academic year of 2021 and 2022. Um, we are probably now only about uh, you know a little less than uh, three months or a little more than three months away from that. Um, parents obviously need to make plans related to that. And obviously I know that things are moving fairly quickly in lots of different things related to um, uh, guidance from certain different agencies. Um, but it seems to me is that, you know, I've asked this question repeatedly, um, been listening to almost every board meeting and there, there's no detail at all that has been provided to by the board uh, or the superintendent on the plan for next year across the board. Uh, and I and I just implore this board at some point that there needs to be some uh, acceleration of what the planning is and how the schools are going to reopen in full. There's this very vague statement related to that we are going back to school um, full time, but what does that mean? How long? Will there be masks? What will be the impact of vaccinations? Um, I think this board needs to move fairly quickly to start to get the details out to the people in this community. That's it, Brian, thank you. Thank you. Amy, I don't see any other hands raised and uh, no one else has uh, entered their information in the Q&A box. Okay. Um, all right, um, Dr. Dolan, was there anything you wanted to address or I can take a crack at it, but if there's anything you wanted to answer. 1st, I'll give you the 1st opportunity. Sure, sure. Uh, 1st, um, um, the plan is for schools to go back to the schedules that were in place before we had a pandemic. So the hours that existed beforehand would be the same hours. The lunchtime would be the same lunchtime. Right. Um, it is, it, the plan is to go back to a full in person instruction. The governor has been clear on that and the plan is that that is what will happen. Um, as for detail plans, um, I did mention all the things that are in place so that the year can start. Um, as for the answer to masks or not, I'll get to masks in a moment for the 2nd question, but, um, do, do I, or anyone, um. Or does anyone know what the rules will be in New Jersey for masks in September? Uh, I'm here to tell you, no, it, it's changed 3 times over this past week and we're keeping up with it as a, everyone's confused by it, parents included, uh, but we are keeping up with it and uh, everyone will continue to do that. Um, as I mentioned before, um, next week, we're supposed to get some initial information from the state as to what will be required for next year. Initial information, it'll continue to change. And we will plan according to that information. And as things change from the CDC, as things change from the DOH, we'll continue to plan based on that. But every step is being taken that can be taken. Um, let me just go to mass for just a minute. I truly understand why parents are confused about this because the CDC came out with one topic and the state came out with one topic. Um, so 
let me just say the governor's office, this is just today because there was so much confusion across the state. It's not a Westfield issue, but there's so much confusion regarding it. The governor's office, Governor Murphy uh, stated today, to clarify, the state will maintain its existing requirements and recommendations for masking in K-12 settings, that is classroom settings, activities during school hours, including gym classes. So masks are still continued. Uh, masks are still to be worn in school, during school, during any school activities. Right? And I understand that that's confusing uh, because there are rules elsewhere. If you do go to that executive order, you will see that it excludes not just schools K to 12, it excludes preschools and some other groups. Right? So masks must be continued to be worn. Additionally, the CDC initially came out with its ruling and that confused people as well, understood. Um, they came out on Saturday, so after their ruling last week, and on Saturday they said, even as vaccinated adults stop wearing masks in many, many settings, schools should maintain recommended COVID-19 layered mitigation strategies, including masks, um, throughout the, at least the remainder of 2020-2021 school year. Right? So we have clear guidance. We have to continue to have masks. And again, I don't blame a parent or anyone else who's confused by this because it is confusing, but we keep on asking questions and reaching. As a matter of fact, I, I was in communication with the local Department of Health uh, because they've received questions from every school district. Um, the local Department of Health has reached out to the state and asked if they could um, if they could write a summary for mass requirements just for parents, right? So parents have a clear understanding of what is um, expected. Uh, regarding K-12 schools for the remainder of the year. So we're, as soon as we get that information, they've indicated they would put something together, we will certainly send it right out to parents because yes, rules are changing in a good way, I think in general, but it is confusing in the meantime. Great. Thank you. That's that's helpful to hear. I had the the same thought. I was watching something on TV last week and heard the head of the C CDC say something and thought, Oh, that makes it sound like uh, it applies immediately, but in fact, it was meant to apply for the fall. So I think there's going to be many iterations um, uh, as as they work through the kinks of what some of these proclamations mean. So um, it it is helpful. I know you know the the FAQs on our on our website don't change constantly, but there was a pretty good update on um, on May fifth. So for anyone who's watching, um, you know, take a look there uh, as a starting point and um, and certainly reach out to your building administrators, I guess, if you have questions going forward. But um, but yeah, masks, masks are still going to be required through the end of this school year for even for outside activities. Right, Dr. Dolan? Yeah. OK. I think that helps um, and hopefully that helps the, the people that had comments tonight at our meeting. Sorry, I'm a little bit in the dark because I'm trying to avoid being a beacon of orange when I turn my light on. Um, okay. All right, uh, so since our public session uh, for comments has ended, um, I would like the board to approve the following resolution. Um, be it resolved that the Board of Education move into private session for the purpose of discussing matters rendered confidential by state and federal law, including negotiations, legal matters, harassment, intimidation, and bullying incidents, and be it further resolved that any discussion held by the board, which need not remain confidential, and the results of the discussion will be made public as soon as practicable. Can I have a second? Second. Thanks, Brendan. Okay. All in favor of going to private, please. Okay. Tara, can we count on you for going to private? Yes. Excellent. Okay. That's everybody then. Um, all right. So we will close the public link and head over to our private session link. Right, Dana? Did I forget anything? Okay, good. Nope. All right. Good. Thank you very much, everyone.